my name is vibhav i work at red hat in the open shift team so in open shift uh, me along with my teammates we maintain the jenkins uh, ecosystem of plugins and the and also maintain the jenkins image for open shift so this is something that we give to our customers uh, so that they can use jenkins alongside with a uh, with open shift so that's that's what me let's get started with the uh uh topic at hand itself so today's topic is jenkins operator on open shift and uh, uh this this talk is in a way uh, a sequel to the previous talk on jenkins operator done by thomas uh, thomas says he in which he covered in depth uh, the jenkins operator how it works the crds and everything this uh, this this talk will cover uh, what all stuff uh, comes after that and uh, what are the new things in the roadmap that we have discussed and also how this operator in integrates with openshift and how this is helpful in the openshift environment uh, so let's let's uh, let's start with a little bit of a story first imagine that uh, like i i i think everyone here knows what jenkins is so in jenkins we have uh, pipelines and we can create a lot of pipelines and we can spin up let me go into present mode so we can spin up a lot of pipelines and uh, once these pipelines are spun up we can configure them based on how we want we can have them periodically uh, uh, spin up whenever they whenever we want and uh, we we can also uh, we uh, with all this all this stuff that it does we also do need to do a lot of housekeeping with it we need to see to it that there is a there is proper backup and restore happening and uh, certain kind of uh, day two level jobs that we need to do uh, usually these jobs are done by the uh, administrators who who are proficient in jenkins and who knows who know jenkins in and out and they are the ones who usually do do these tasks now in an event if the admin is not there or uh, there is a requirement which needs to be fulfilled for the for these day to day to level tasks to be done uh, on a on a continuous basis what do we do then so let's 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 just understand who this admin is this admin is someone who is operating jenkins and he knows how to operate jenkins and that is what the jenkins operator for kubernetes is basically in the kubernetes environment where uh, everything is based off of pods and containers and jenkins runs in pods it it is uh, it is possible for us to create something that can actually manage those jenkins instances and manage the jenkins instances themselves and do the hand holding uh, for the backup and recovery and configuration and you know do these jobs period periodically by themselves so that is that is the idea of the operator now if if uh, and how does this operator achieve this now this operator is basically a uh, uh, is is a piece of code which kind of helps in uh, patching all these things together and uh, making the entire workflow happen for example if i need to backup and restore there needs to be some code written uh, that does this backup and restore for jenkins in a specific way so for example i need to backup all the plugins that are being used in varlib jenkins plugins it will uh, take take that all stuff out and then it will uh, it will do that stuff by itself now that is just the jenkins operator now uh, if you want more in depth uh, in depth understanding on what operators are abhi sharma has done a brilliant talk on operators 101 which kind of goes through the basics of these operators and uh, kind of covers them but in this talk we will talk about uh, where have we come from the last time and what do we look uh, what are what we as uh, open shift engineers are trying to bring to the table so let's let's understand uh, how the jenkins operator on open shift uh, came along so if you look at this so the jenkins operator on open shift is not an entirely new concept because jenkins has been uh, 
provided to OpenShift OpenShift users uh, for some time. Uh, the open source version of it. Here you can see a template, uh, the, uh, which is created for Jenkins. It creates uh, it creates certain uh, resources which are necessary uh, for configuration of Jenkins, and uh, these resources are created, uh, including the image. So the image also over here. These are created so that uh, OpenShift specific processes are uh, possible to be done through Jenkins. Now, what do I mean by that? So, uh, so in in Jenkins, uh, so as you saw the template over there in Jenkins, why why do we even have Jenkins in OpenShift? So, uh, what? So basically, when we need to uh, do entire build pipelines in Kubernetes itself, Jenkins is one tool which has the level of extensibility that uh, no other tool has. So the Jenkins uh, Jenkins has a Kubernetes plugin which we have used to create the OpenShift Sync and OpenShift Client plugins. These plugins integrate with uh, Jenkins and OpenShift and help to create uh, pipelines. Now, if I uh, so let me uh, I'll I'll show you an example of a build config and build uh, in a while where I'm showing the operators. So, so but that's just to kind of get an understanding how Jenkins integrates with OpenShift is through builds and build configs, where build config is basically the configuration of a Jenkins pipelines if the build config is configured with a Jenkins strategy. Now, uh, we also provide uh, some extra images uh, with, which, which, are as, which are basically pod templates. These images uh, which are used in these pod templates uh, for Kubernetes plugins, these images are for Node.js and Maven and they can be used uh, as, as like a base for uh, doing the builds. And these basically act like agents. Users can go ahead and create their own agents ba uh, based on the base that we, that we give in the Jenkins repo. So the Jenkins repo is situated in, in over here, GitHub slash uh, OpenShift Jenkins. Uh, users can go here and they can go to the, uh, See, the, these are the agent images that we give. So these are the ones. And they are used in the pod templates. So after that, uh, let's talk about uh, wh why we are moving to the uh, Jenkins operator. Now, uh, considering now based on what I've said, you might have got an understanding of Jenkins is already there in OpenShift, but why the operator? Now, uh, with, the, with, with Tekton coming through, and uh, the deprecation of uh, Jenkins on OpenShift do, uh, doesn't doesn't mean that the people will stop using Jenkins. Uh, a lot of people will continue using Jenkins because they have a lot of uh, pipelines that they would like to uh, that uh, that they've had from a long time, and they would like to either migrate into a new Jenkins solution or just keep things as they are. So for that, we are uh, we are helping out with the Jenkins operator. And trying to create a, a bet, uh, create a more enterprise level solution with uh, the maintainer of uh, the Jenkins operator, Thomas, and we are working together to uh, have a more enterprise ready Jenkins operator. So the deprecation and uh, the need for new solution has uh, brought us to the Jenkins operator on OpenShift. And apart from that, also like we also we need to manage Jenkins better manage Jenkins uh, and do a lot of other things we couldn't do before, like uh, have immutable, uh, immutable environments, which can be replicated uh, so that the user doesn't, uh, user doesn't see changes all the time when, whenever he updates, things like those. So that is, that is how the vision of uh, OpenShift and Jenkins has turned towards the Jenkins operator. Let's move on to the, so, uh, in the demo, I will uh, kind of go through go through all this again. This is just to kind of get an idea uh, right now. Let's uh, let's talk about the operator itself and what the operator does, and look at uh, some examples of the uh, stuff. So, in the last talk, if you were there for uh, the Jenkins operator given by Thomas, like he mentioned. Uh, he he went through the entire uh, uh, 
ecosystem of operator operator framework and custom resource definitions and custom resources so to to kind of uh, get a basic idea of what they are custom resource definitions are like uh, kubernetes resources uh, which which you create so if you had to create a kubernetes resource the custom resource definition would allow you to define one and the custom resource will be an instance of that custom resource definition and that resource uh, will be backed by your operator uh, which is basically your kubernetes controller and uh, this will be uh, and the logic that you put in the operator slash controller will be the one that will define how uh, the operator reacts when it sees an instance of this so as a simple example of a crd of jenkins itself can you can you see the uh, terminal on the right should i increase the font mm, yeah it would be great to make it a bit better yeah. okay cool so okay that's fine so let me just kind of like this okay so uh crd so let let's let's get a uh, get a glimpse of what a crd looks like so crd is basically an api endpoint that we defined uh from before uh so that the operator can latch on to it and then uh, listen on a request on that api endpoint because that's that's how you can see it so we can see that the these ones have already been created by us to create this if you go to the uh, jenkins uh, jenkins ci kubernetes operator one sec if you go to the jenkins ci kubernetes operator repo which is our upstream uh, so if you go here if you go here in deploy and you go into crds and you you choose one of these crd this is the one uh, when we do a kubectl create hyphen f on this basically we turn this yaml into a resource we turn this into a resource this is this is what is created over here so this is what jenkins.jenkins.io is is basically this so let's go it back so this is the crd and to uh, to have an example of a cr uh, let let me just uh, do something similar so a cr is a basically an instance of the crd and considering we are on open shift right now we will look at an open shift specific cr because uh, open shift uh, if you might not know is a distribution of kubernetes that is uh, not exactly distribution it's it's like a distro of kubernetes with uh, by red hat and it has uh, some increased security policies and such because of which there are certain configurations that need to be kept in mind so the image that will run with this uh, this configuration which you see here qa.io openshift origin jenkins latest and this is this is readily available on qa this is not something anyone has to pay for anything but this is readily available and this is the image that we are using and it is uh, built from uh, one sec yeah so yeah it is built from the openshift jenkins repo from here this is where it's built from from jenkins slash 2 and basically this is the image that we are using here and this is the jenkins uh, conf this is the environment configuration that we give for the jenkins uh, which is necessary for it to run on openshift and uh, why do we do this and how did we manage this before so in this cr which is uh, which gives all this configuration allows us to give the configuration for jenkins this this we used to give it before in a form of a template now if you know uh what a uh, helm chart is uh openshift template is basically uh a helm chart before charts helm charts are cool so 
this this is something uh, that in which you can define uh, what all resources you want a deployment config service uh, build build config config maps secrets anything you want pvcs pvs that you would want to create and the environment variables and the parameters that you would pass with the uh, processing processing of the template which will replace it's almost like a helm chart but so uh, this is this is what we used to give before but now that we are uh, openshift is moving towards a more uh, kubernetes centric uh, way of doing things we are uh, moving from this to the operator and in the operator we are kind of basically replicating this as a cr now once that is done let's see how the operator looks like and how it actually spins up jenkins so considering you've got already gotten a look at the cr let's uh, let's go over here i'm in the jenkins console right now i've already logged in and uh, uh i've already logged in and i have uh, if you can notice over here there is a i have done a, there is a watch command running on oc get pods which is similar to kubectl get pods uh and you can see that these two pods are already running this pod is uh, for the jenkins operator which i uh, started way before and the jenkins example pod which also was started way before because because of this uh, presentation uh let's let's and the thing is the best way about the best thing about this is it's very easy to deploy an operator on openshift all you need to do is go to the openshift console and then in the operators uh, uh sidebar in the, you you have to go to the operators drop down go to operator hub and uh, in operator hub um just search for jenkins sorry for the dogs i don't know who let them out so go to the operator hub search for jenkins you can see that this is saying install in the project jenkins operator test uh project means namespace in openshift so go here and you can see that it's already installed I'm not going to uninstall it because it takes uh times of time so you can see all the information for the operator uh, operator is given here currently you can see that the operator is on 0.4.1 rc1 but actually in upstream we have only released to 0.4.0 so what we are doing here is we are we keep reiterating based on the latest code base uh, till we reach the release now why do we do this we do this because uh, the, at at times uh, there a uh, few things like uh, recently we didn't have any routes working so to get to routes working we had to actually uh, uh, do do a few prs and then once that got merged we 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 thought okay it makes sense to do an rc1 but we'll actually only do a final release of this only when upstream does a release so we are upstream first at any cost once the upstream is 0.4.1 release we will do a 0.4.1 release only then till that one it will always be like a, a rc1 so this is it uh so the so i go here install the operator everything's installed uh you see that the jenkins example is operator is installed and uh, you can also see that the jenkins example is installed and uh, if i go into the installed operators and go over here you can uh, i can actually just create a jenkins instance from saying create instance here but uh, considering it's already running so i'll just go ahead with uh, playing around with this so this jenkins example that is created there's a route created for it as well a route is basically an uh, endpoint for a service it's like ingress so this uh, if i give this over here which i have already given let me just refresh so this is the jenkins instance which has been created by the operator now let me uh, let me spin up a pipeline which uh, which uses openshift dsl for this i will be using a pipeline over here 
in the Node.js example. Uh, and this is the Jenkins file. This Jenkins file uses the OpenShift uh, with cluster, with project, and all the OpenShift release related commands, which come from the uh, DSL, which in, in turn comes from the uh, Jenkins client plugin for OpenShift. So OpenShift client plugin. And this can be seen over here. So this is basically the plugin that uh, makes this happen. So let me just uh, start the pipeline. So basically when I create this, uh, OpenShift sees that, okay, there is a Jenkins file and then it creates a build config with Jenkins strategy. And every, and based on the configuration, once a build config is created, it it creates an instance of that build config. Uh, it creates a build basically. So this is the build that is created, Jenkins pipeline. And this syncs with the example. You can see that this pod is created and this pod is nothing but the uh, Jenkins uh, agent. This is the agent pod that is created through the pod template in Kubernetes plugin, or mecha the mechanism through that. And then once this is created, Let's go over here and see what, what's up. So we can see that something's happening. Magic, most probably not tragic. Mm. So we can see that these, uh, these builds are running. And uh, I guess it failed, but basically this uh, build got started, it got synced, and uh, it was started over here. So the Jenkins, basically the build and build config were able to uh, line up together with the Jenkins operator created the uh, Jenkins instance and the OpenShift workflow for Jenkins using the operator is working properly. Now, uh, let me go back to the, so we are done with this one. So let's, so that, that was the demo. Now let me actually uh, uh, talk about the architecture and the roadmap. So what happened right now basically was uh, we created a Jenkins CR, uh, which was which was this already, which was created, and the Jenkins CR uh, uh, when it is when it when it is created, the Jenkins CR does a base reconciliation to uh, set all the uh, necessities for the uh, Jenkins instance, such as the uh, pod and the restrictions on the pod and the container spec and everything. It's almost like a pod spec stuff that is happening. Then in the user reconciliation, it uh, installs all the Groovy script, cast uh, scripts, and it all the it does the configuration on that level for Jenkins, and then it reconciles based on if there is any change in the Jenkins here. Now, uh, this architecture kind kind of can be linear in a way, and is known to cause issues because of the uh, different nuanced things it does. So currently. Uh, on the roadmap, there are a few things that we are looking at to make this better. Now, the 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 first problem is that uh, if you notice this, this is a pod. We we didn't really create a deployment, so there is a pod created, but not a deployment created for the Jenkins. So this is the first. Uh, first hurdle that we have to go through. So this, we don't have a deployment for the Jenkins example, but this is the first hurdle that we have to go through. And uh, this is important because then uh, things like Istio and all, which do, which do like injection uh, through admission webhooks, uh, or mut mutation webhooks, uh, they can they can be used uh, with Jenkins because recently we had an issue which, which was around this. Uh, then after that, the other thing we are, uh, the other things we are we are planning for are uh, the 
air gapped environment the air gapped environment includes the jenkins image controller i'll just explain this one sec so in the air gapped environment basically uh, the customer shouldn't have to or the user shouldn't have to uh, have access to internet but they should be able to use their jenkins as is no need to install any plugins or like connect to the jenkins uh, or plugins repo and then try to uh, download it because at times the uh, repo repo isn't even online and uh, there are problems so uh, to overcome these things like uh, the first solution that we are working on uh, on our team akram is working on uh, is with is the jenkins image controller which helps to uh, create immutable jenkins images with the uh, plugins pre installed so that the user doesn't have to wait for the plugins to get uh, downloaded every time the cr starts up uh, a new cr is created this is the pro issue which is happening right now then uh, the next one is uh, have a local update center uh, which would be nice to have but uh, we still have to figure out how we would go about this then uh, after this we are thinking the another another main thing that we are of uh, focusing on is the current user reconciliation so as i said the user reconciliation is uh, the stuff that uh, happens after the base reconciliation base reconciliation is like uh, the operator basically sets a a base for the uh, jenkins to be spun up on so what do i mean by base i mean all the config maps that need to be created all the uh, all the config maps that need to be created all the all the port spec that needs to be instantiated and all that stuff the user reconciliation is where the groovy scripts the cast and uh, restore and backup occurs so our main issue uh, issue or improvement that we need to do here is uh, basically modularize the entire system otherwise it acts a lot like a monolith so we need to uh, we are uh, working on that another thing as you just saw openshift support is what we are working on so currently as of now this jenkins image controller uh Jen refactor jenkins cr reconciliation or uh, deployment instead of pod is actively being worked on and uh, the other stuff we will get to but this is this is an on our road map for this year uh, i hope uh, i'm hoping that we kind of Uh, are able to come up with a good design and uh, a good solution for uh, the end users which most probably uh, we are in, like which which would be enterprise uh, level customers who don't want to move away from jenkins and want to keep using jenkins but it would be nice to have some kind of uh, overarching operator of uh, of this uh, sort to manage things because in the new kubernetes and uh, kubernetes uh, like infrastructure age like it, it it's it's become like almost a necessity to have a, a jenkins operator so uh, the last thing multi branch pipeline support this is uh, something we we will tackle once the basic stuff gets uh, over uh, so this is this is something we'll do at the uh, once once the basic stuff is done so that was that was it for my talk uh this uh for for any questions or feedback you can just follow these and then uh, you can come to the uh, vertus lab os slack where we can answer any questions you have for uh, the operator uh and we we love the suggestions keep them coming and uh, every thursday we have a community call uh um i it is so if you want to join the community call or get more information on it you can go over here the kubernetes operator repo jenkins ci kubernetes operator and go down over here the very end you can see a part called every thursday we have a community call at 16:30 uh ct on google meet uh check this out there's uh join us on the vertus lab slack uh good to have you guys here and thank you thank you for the presentation
Uh, we've got a few questions, um, and yeah, if you want to ask more questions, please use Kone, and uh, let's uh, start from them. Uh, so the first question was about uh, uh, OpenShift version. So what is the version of OpenShift you're running for the demo? Um, I'm running a 4.4 for the demo. Mm -hmm. So currently, uh, last Thursday, we had a GA for 4.5. Mm -hmm. Will uh, the paper, uh, it, uh, require any updates to support 4.5? So the thing is the operator hub, uh, mm -hmm. it, will, it will install the operator on any OpenShift version that is uh, supported. So mm -hmm. we just, so once the operator gets updated in the operator hub, it will, it would just have to be, uh, you just have to click install and whatever version of OpenShift you're running, it will install, uh, install that. But uh, the question, is more about version specific OpenShift images for uh, Jenkins operator, right? Mm -hmm. So for that, uh, we are actually trying to figure out a process to like uh, keep keep it uh, coming, like have version specific Jenkins operator images. Uh, what we are doing right now is we are just uh, pushing images which are uh, which which we just run on the latest one because but as we so currently we are in we are not, we are in uh, we are not even in tech preview we are in developer preview so in that developer preview once we are in tech preview we'll start kind of working on that and that would most probably be like in uh, by the end of the year or in three months or something mm -hmm. yeah thanks uh, for the detailed answer Let's move on to the next question. Uh, so, well, uh, this question is rather about the Jenkins. How to update uh, the Jenkins and plugins without any downtime? Mm, this is, so uh, recently, I'll just, uh, I'll just share my screen. So what we've been working working on recently is uh, Akram from our team has been working on the uh, the Jenkins image controller, which which should help you do that. So what? So if you go to the, it's actually the latest pull request on top over here. So if you notice, so what this image controller actually does, it will create an image. So if you have an image that you want to update to, so if you so consider you have like image one and image two, so you are at one right now with plugins set one and you have, you want to go to image two, which has increased uh, Jenkins version and plugin set two, uh, which is updated plugin set. You would, all you have to do is use this image controller in uh, the operator. This is a new feature that will roll out soon. You should be able to just uh, say something like, you, like uh, image, image build or image deploy or something, and uh, this this deployment will be replaced by this new deployment of uh, the Jenkins pod uh, without any downtime. So to to fix this issue, that's why, uh, as I said earlier, we need to move from the pod to the deployment. Uh, way of doing things currently. So this, this first thing uh, that I mentioned for the roadmap, this and this need to be completed for being able to achieve that through the, through the operator. Mm -hmm. Does that, I guess that answers your question. Mm, I think so. so still um, updating Jenkins without any time. It also presumes some architecture changes to support full high availability. Uh, well, it's possible to some extent uh, with uh, various tricks in Jenkins, uh, but yeah, no, full high availability is also subject for discussions in uh, Cloud Native Seek. Mm -hmm. 
because we would really like to have that, though it's a quite long story to get it implemented. So approach uh, which is used in uh, operator and in OpenShift by basically visioning my, uh, multiple masters uh, from pods, I would, yeah, it would, I would say that it's a real sense of high availability for cluster, not for a single master instance. Mm -hmm. Well, like I, I had a question as well. It would it be okay if I ask a question. Yeah, I think I think Vibhav has so Vibhav on this slide you mentioned air gapped environments mm -hmm. and I think air gap Jenkins is already challenged. I can't imagine the challenge doing air gapped Kubernetes. Are there any insights you could share with the audience about what your experience has been learning how to do air gapped environment support or what are the things you would guide people who are developing for Kubernetes to think about, hey, consider this in case someone is trying to be air gapped with your deployment? So I, I for one, haven't especially worked on a explicit air gap environment of sorts, but uh, in OpenShift, uh, we kind of try to, uh, what we do is we get all the resources in a cluster, uh, like uh, that are needed for a cluster and keep it localized to that cluster. So we uh, download all the images from before. So in the, uh, in the cluster of the cust uh, customer or the user, and we keep it installed over there. And uh, next time when there is an OpenShift uh, update to OpenShift, all of that stuff will be updated once when they, when they connect to the connect for update and they are back. So it's just that one point where that update happens with all the resources. Now with the operator itself, the Jenkins operator itself, the problem of air gap is mostly with uh, the plugins, I think, because I, I, I'm not the best guy to talk about this. Akram would, would know much better, but uh, the main problem is with the plugins because uh, uh, Right now, whenever a new Jenkins image spins up, it tries to install on top all the plugins uh, by downloading it from the internet. Now, in a case where uh, someone cannot download all those plugins, they would need those plugins baked into their image from before. This is one way of like uh, air gapping it because then just, there is no need for the Jenkins to install anything else at that point in time. Correct. And the other way to uh, air gap it in case there is a need for plugins is to have like a, a local update center uh, for that. So if there is a local update center, the Jenkins instances uh, can just connect to it and then uh, update it from there. Yeah, local update center is uh, what we generally recommend, though update center has its own limitations. For example, there are two installer plugins, which can, for example, install Maven uh, or Gradle um, from the internet. And in this case, uh, we didn't generate uh, local update centers for these tools, so it's uh, totally possible. Uh, but right now, our update centers only reference um, and um, download uh, sources from the internet. So if you use um, plugins like that, then uh, it will need additional steps uh, to implement. Uh, I, I think there needs to be more discussion on this for sure, because this is just some idea that we sketched, not really uh, knowing the implementation level details completely about this. I, th I think this, is, this might be a great conversation to have during one of the community calls for sure. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. We Thank had uh, one more question in the chat. Okay. Uh, it's about uh, version um, operator is the key framework for development. Yeah. So yeah, operator SDK is the framework for development. Yeah, that's what we are using right now. Mm -hmm. So, and then, then I had another one is, 
can you control the resource consumption that Jenkins is allowed to use so that one of your users does not inadvertently allocate hundreds of agents or or is that not a common common problem you have to confront how how do you deal with resource consumption allocation using the operator that's a very interesting question that's a very interesting so uh, we were thinking of something like uh, uh, so profiles security profiles and uh, I, I, for, I forget what it's called something we had sketched out here uh, performance profiles or something I think this is this is where we I, I'm gonna write this down this is very interesting I, I we haven't thought of this very frankly uh, Okay, so you're, you're saying uh, what if a user spins up like 100 agents, like there should be some kind of uh, cap to how much they can consume, right? That, that was what I was wondering is if I define a declarative pipeline that allows, that tries to do 50 things in parallel and suddenly is overtaxing my Kubernetes cluster or my OpenShift cluster, is there is there a defense for that, or is it rather allow the OpenShift safety so, measures that are already there? They are enough to protect it. So there are there are measures on Kubernetes side to like uh, uh, like what is the max amount of requests and requests uh, the a certain uh, user can make uh, in terms of uh, CPU and memory, but or rather, uh, how much request a pod can make to us. It, this, this definitely needs to be looked into further, but Kubernetes has it from before. How that would translate to a user is something you need to figure out because uh, the operator would use the service account for the operator. And is, is there some kind of impersonation that we are talking about that would happen in the middle? This is something uh, maybe we need to figure out because uh, when, when the user would use the Kubernetes instance, they would basically impersonating as the, uh, the service account would be imp impersonating as the user and then it would try to execute everything. So I, 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 need, I need to look up on that. So that, thank you for that question though. Well, so I, I think what you're saying is that Kubernetes has a very, already a very good safeguard against the Jenkins service over allocating resource, right? That, that Kubernetes, but, but the, there's not an immediately obvious way of saying, I want to limit a specific user who's using a piece of that service. Did I, did I understand your description correctly? Yeah. Okay, the thing thank is, you. The thing is, okay. We, we could have a, ch a chat on this offline because uh, this is very interesting to me because uh, the user will allocate, but uh, it will be through the uh, Jenkins service account, not the right. user service account. So let's, let's, uh, let's take this offline, I think. I think it's, it's very interesting to talk over. Is that, is that it for the question? Well, there was one more that just arrived in the Q&A asking about, is anyone using the HA Jenkins? So I assume that means high availability, is trying to implement high availability Jenkins using the operator. Uh, their concern is they have to, when they upgrade Jenkins or a plugin, they have to restart Jenkins. And so the, the, rest, the problem with the restart of Jenkins uh, is different. I, I think the HA thing is different. The HA Jenkins would be the plugin, right, for HA. I, see, I, I'm not. I'm not sure what that would what that would mean in this context of of HA. If Jenkins itself does require a restart in order to upgrade its plugins, right? Yeah. Therefore, that that's sort of the nature of Jenkins. Oleg, do you have some insights to offer there, and what the question may in fact be asking? Uh, uh, well, uh, so I'm also not sure what it would mean because 
uh, operator and uh, other similar tools, uh, they allow to achieve each uh, but uh, to achieve each but uh, provisioning uh, multiple. Um, yeah, sorry, high availability by uh, provisioning uh, multiple masters. So basically, you have CRDs, and on demand, for example, when you modify the instance, uh, then you can provision uh, uh, new Jenkins with new configuration. Um, the old one is, is still around, and if you have SSO, if you want uh, proper, uh, if you have proper routing, uh, then from user perspective, it will be like a chain. Because your service is not uh, just a single Jenkins server, but uh, multiple uh, Jenkins servers uh, connected uh, by uh, whatever um, uh, additional uh, subsystem uh, system. So that uh, what is um, H A uh, use Jenkins and operator. Uh, um, but yeah, I'm not sure whether anybody really does it at the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay. I actually actually have nothing on the HA part because uh, I haven't used it. But uh, I, I I think uh, they might be talking about the uh, restart that happens when they install a new plugin in in the Jenkins. I don't know. Yeah, usually it's about that or about uh, instance uh, going down. So, for example, what we were presenting a few years ago um, at Jenkins Contributor Summit, uh, multi tenant Jenkins. So, when basically Jenkins Master uh, consists of uh, multiple instances with shared context, and uh, when uh, one instance goes down, then uh, uh, users uh, don't notice that. In this case, I think it's rather, rather related to upgrades. Uh, but yeah, again, uh, upgrade uh, um, of uh, Jenkins master in the current architecture requires restart. So you can achieve uh, each on a system level, but not on a level of a particular master. Now, there was one more question that was asked. I, I'm not sure if it may have been asked directly to me rather than to the, all the panelists. It asks about the best practice to transfer a regular Jenkins file to a Jenkins file with operator. And for me, this is also a question because if I'm using a Jenkins file outside of Kubernetes or outside of outside of the, that environment, is are there some things that I should do to make sure that I'm portable to work inside um, a, an OpenShift or a Kubernetes environment with my with my Jenkins file? So the 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 reason uh, so. Uh, as far as I know, the, like the way Jenkins even works with Kubernetes is through the Jenkins plugin, uh, and that happens even even if you're outside Jenkins, even if you're outside Kubernetes and running Jenkins on a server with Kubernetes as a secondary entity somewhere, and uh, the Kubernetes plugin has been configured to connect to the Kubernetes uh, uh, server and then run everything on top of that, or you run Jenkins inside a pod in Kubernetes, and then you uh, and then it by default it picks up all the configuration that needed to run do stuff inside Kubernetes. This, this I am not sure if there is a best practice. The only difference would be to uh, or it would be between the configurations Kubernetes plugin configurations. Okay, so the, the hint then for me is whether I'm inside Kubernetes running Jenkins or Jenkins is running outside, if I've got the Kubernetes plugin installed and I'm using Kubernetes to allocate agents, I should see similar behaviors in both cases. Yep. Okay, Ideal. thank you. Welcome. So in addition to that, we got uh, one more question about what is the best uh, practice uh, to transfer a color Jenkins file uh, to Jenkins file with uh, the operator? We haven't covered it yet, right? This is what we talked about right now, I suppose. Yeah, oh, yeah at least okay. that was what I was trying to address. I, maybe okay. I just phrased the question badly or like, sorry. No worries, sorry. Uh, okay, looks like uh, there is uh, no more questions. 
again uh, we will stop uh, the recording and after that uh, we will uh, just grant uh, voice permissions to everyone who is on the call so we can uh, have more discussion of the record thanks again for we uh, for the presentation it's much appreciated and yeah, we are looking forward to see how link separator evolves and uh, what new features will get there soon thank you all for uh, this opportunity to give the talk it was uh, it was very nice thank you Thank you too. So thanks all. Uh